Okay, you ready? Uh, this is a kid's pencil. It's called a um, tririte. Now, I use it for stomping and drawing at the same time. I do particle and wave with this uh, thick kid's pencil. And I have, oh, different lengths of them also. Now, I never sharpen these too much except for how I wear them. And I wear them uh, in two different fashions. They, uh, they accomplish uh, two jobs at once, particle and wave. I can lay it down and I can twirl it so that that wood just gets right down to smudging. So it's a stomp, they call it in drafting or drawing when you can smear. So this, as I'm putting down, can smear also. And because of this tricore, I can get a really, really nice uh, indication of uh, where this is going. I can actually just move without putting anything down. And then I can see it, and then feel it, and twirl it. And I can hear it too. It makes some interesting noises. Sometimes the dog starts barking next door. <laughs> I, think, I think the dog's asleep now, because sometimes they get rolling on these pencils, and it's a real hoot now. They start barking like crazy. That's a little too hard there. So, as I explore on canvas, I can I can uh, figure out where where the sharpness is. Now these uh, examples right here are kind of uh, going towards the finish stages, and maybe I'll demonstrate this uh, with a uh, blank canvas, but. I uh, was just using this and I thought, you know, this would be a really interesting uh, way uh, to demonstrate uh, some of these tools I use. This is just one of them. I have tons of them for these canvas drawings. And the reason I uh, became interested in the canvas drawings was because uh, stuff showed up. And when I did mirrors, stuff showed up too. That was first. A guy, uh, approached me in an antique shop I was working at and, and trying to make a living doing restorations of mostly paintings, but just mostly junk. And um, uh, a lot of flippers, they were going to garage sales, buying crap. Francis, can you fix it? You know, and I need it by, you know, the garage sale next week so I can make some money on it. And well, I can't pay you that much, you know, because I got to flip it. So I worked for a lot of those kind of guys. This one guy I, came up to me one time. He says, do me an abstract painting on this mirror. It's broken. It's this crack down there, and it's a beautiful frame. It's antique. It's really worth something, but with that crack, just do a painting on it, Francis. Okay. It sat there for a few months. No pressure. That's... One of the reasons, if anybody gave me any pressure, I fired them. I didn't work for them. This guy never gave me any pressure. So I started, I, oh, he comes up to me and he asks me about it. And I said, well, do you want a clipper ship? I've done a few of those. Do you want a landscape? You know, do you want, what do you want on it? He says, no, do an abstract on it. I said, you sure? It's an antique, you know, kind of a Baroque uh, filigree, you know, and, he says, no, I want an abstract on it. I said, really? Well, then I started to do it, and oh my God, what a, that was a quantum leap. What happened when I started doing abstracts on mirrors predated what happened on canvas with this screen effect and this space coming through. Well, the, the first time I saw the space coming through was with this mirror work on this broken antique glass. And what really startled me was when I took a palette knife and I scraped that wet paint away and that glass showed up through it. And then when I started brushwork on it, this is brushwork uh, back here, 
just on a silhouette of a clipper. Yeah, healing uh, hove two over there, and and I have this nice uh, uh, robin's egg blue, I guess, sky, peppered on with dry brush. Mirror, uh, mirrors just are fascinating, and I'm going to demonstrate a few abstracts, and uh, that's uh, uh, coming up next, and the whole the way that uh, that evolves. Uh, stay tuned, particle, particle wave, wave, mirror, particle, paint, you know, something.